Hi guys, it just turned 1221, and I have a video today for uh, two readings for the Divine Feminine yesterday and today. A lot of profound messages from the sand art, really profound, <laughs> and then um, I'll do oracle cards at the end as usual, okay? So today is November 8th, 2018, so we're doing a Divine Feminine read for the 7th and the 8th. It has a lot of information about the feminine and the masculine as well as people in your environment and messages that come through and I'm going to start with the sand art okay, for this November 8, 2018. So the sand arts were two as well. So from, from the seventh I got uh, seeing a space between someone's two front teeth as well as whitening teeth and molds and things like that with the teeth. Also metamorphosis, the caterpillar turning into the butterfly, beautiful transformation, the leaves and how beautiful they are when they're dying. Uh, twins, I literally seeing twins inside of a 12D shield together, like in a pod. And then I got twins in space. <laughs> Isn't that from the Muppets? Something like that, but that's what I was getting. Um, a sudden erection, but also a sudden like oil eruption and a pillar of light. Beautiful, a be then I was seeing with this, a beautiful woman um, in the spotlight takes off. So I was getting the beautiful woman, I forget which deck it is, um, someone I've seen before uh, with tarot cards. One of the queens is like that, she's um, just beautiful and white, but you know how those cards are when it's a really beautiful queen, but this is what I was seeing here. This beautiful woman in the spotlight now takes off. And I was also seeing a sperm and an egg in a heart-shaped stream, okay? So them coming together and then also under a microscope. So with this erection as well, I was getting, um, and this beautiful woman in the spotlight, I'm seeing um, masculine being attracted to certain things that they want to tell the feminine about, like there's a masculine who likes the space between the feminine's two front teeth, and there's also a masculine who liked, uh, who likes buck teeth of his, <laughs> of his feminine. And then also lots of eggs being fertilized. And I was getting under the hood, and then I was getting under the hood or the guise of destruction also comes life from out of nowhere. I was getting a shower and a big shower head. So take that as <laughs> however you want to take it. And then came in the valley of darkness. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. And that's from 23.4. And spirit was just connecting with me. So very profound information coming through. You know, it's directly relating the rod and staff unions, okay? That you're going through the shadow, the valley of the shadow of death, okay? That you will fear no evil for, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me, okay? So you're always together. Even when you go through hard times, okay? And dying and being reborn like the leaves. See the beauty in the death. Spirit still connecting with me. And you will be showered with blessings. And then I was getting the little drummer boy, and it, which made me choke up a little bit. Um, the pyramids have softened. And then I was getting the three wise men who have softened with age. The elders are teaching the child. So as we come up to the holidays, I'm seeing the grandparents, like teaching their grandchildren the things they've learned. Also, um, Spirit's connecting with me. We're going into the eighth now. Ribbons of muscle and fireworks, and also taffy. Um, and this comes up in the read too. Um, something came up in the read about candy factories. So somebody might be at a candy factory, I was seeing taffy. But also I was seeing multiple wishbones, so people might be able to get their wish, you know, like at Thanksgiving, pulling the wishbone to get your wish. And also a bunny sniffing around, and I was getting Easter in November, like Christmas in July. Uh, also pelvis, pelvic bones, like the whole structure of the pelvis. I was getting from the butt to the hips to the iliac crest, that whole piece um, is a focus right now as well as the GI was coming up before as well. Um, also nuns were coming up and their their hats and um, I was seeing like a lizard. It kind of looked like an alligator but not. It was more like a lizard. But, or a dog who likes to drag themselves on their belly across the floor. Also seeing a baby bird and a little chick. 
possibly someone being scolded by nuns. So this is a past template that we need to break. And then I was getting uh, Big Mama teaches children with love. And then I was getting, uh, what's his name? You know who, who I'm talking about, who plays the, the grandmother? What's his name? I just can't think of his name, but you know who I'm talking about. He's got a million movies and he's so funny. But I'm picturing him, Big Mama, teaching children with love. Even if it's tough love, love, not like scolding like a nun would do. Also seeing uh, someone stuffing their hand into their mouth, so someone might be able to do that, so they're showing off. And also just stuffing with Thanksgiving. And also shadow puppets on the wall and hand or sock puppets. And then I was also getting Niagara Falls again and a cop directing traffic. I was, setting, I was seeing a group of people with children all lying, lying down on an edge of a cliff, like at the falls, like with their heads over the edge to see more closely, but they're all lying down on the ground. But it was a, you know, a pretty big group. Also, or maybe someone camping out to see a show or camping out at a show to get tickets, things like that. But I was specifically getting light show for a singer, obviously a lot of kids like uh, to camp out to get tick good tickets for a singer. But I was also getting for a spiritual healer or angel. So um, that can be metaphoric, but also maybe someone, there's a sighting where people are going to these falls to see something that someone saw. And then I got Pop Goes the Weasel and passing gas in front of other people. <laughs> so some kids may be embarrassed about that. And also seeing a spirit walk through the falls like a doorway. So I was literally seeing like a rectangular doorway and a spirit walking through the water. Okay. And that might be referencing to walking on water as well. But walking through the falls like a doorway. And then I was getting a curtain call. And then Moham Mohammed on the Mount. And then I went online to reread about that. And it was just really about being flexible. You know, the mountain won't come to Muhammad. Muhammad comes to the mountain. Be flexible. Um, also, then I was seeing, um, I was seeing um, a spiritual being on the mountain, like Muhammad on the mountain, talking to a child, and him becoming small so he could talk to the child eye to eye, like on their level. And it's not saying that the the child is less smart or less um, evolved, and that's why he's he wants to go eye to eye on the child's level to make them equal. Also a blowfish, a saddle, a horse's saddle. Also uh, pouring fudge on ice cream sundaes. Also then I saw um, a man with a jet pack, a fire starter, and maybe a pile of poop. Um, and then I was seeing drones and then like poof, poof it's gone. So the, the one message I was getting is like, you know, everything goes by really quickly. So appreciate the moment before it's gone. And then also a man down, that it's time to get up and start again. So when you fall, so keep getting up again. And then I'm seeing a funnel to channel your energies into building new mountains, new mountains to climb, to discover, to conquer, to be inspired by and then you can rest. Okay, so really beautiful messages from the sand art. And some of these also tie in with the reads from yesterday and today. So we're gonna get into that now. Okay, so on the, oh, two. Um, not last night, the night before I watched Kings, which was very disturbing to watch. It's just so unsettling because there's so much injustice, but it's, it was definitely about the, um, I was getting injustice themes all week. So it was really about learning to not get triggered by the riots and things like that, like in the Rodney King situation, um, the injustice of it all, and learning to um, you know, detach yourself from the wanting to get revenge feelings, okay, or get justice at least. Um, and allow the universe to take care of itself, okay? Um, then, uh, so yesterday was the new moon, November 7th, okay? And um, looking forward to the eclipses came up yesterday, so that's January 5th is the 
so partial solar and then January 20th to the 21st is the uh, total lunar eclipse just so you're aware um, here where I am it's the full lunar on 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 January 21st okay um, also that, that the nodes have switched to the north node in cancer and the south node in Capricorn you know so it's all about the mom and the home and uh, you know don't forget it's the crab and the crab has a hard shell on them okay so um, yesterday when I When I did the read, uh, right before I started the feminine read, I was getting um, T for two and two for T, me for you and you for me. Okay. Uh, there was uh, the major arcana was the chariot, solar deity, which is the sun in this deck, it's the Syrian star seed. Um, justice, of course, justice, and then Luna is the moon. There were two cups, two wands, two pentacles, and one sword, so very well distributed yesterday. And then the only, court court, the only court card in the main spread was um, the Queen of Pentacles. Um, the after card, though, was the Knight of Wands. So there could be a Knight of Wands in the after, after the read card. Okay. As far as the numbers in the coding, um, 66 came up, as well as 9, 21, 6, and 36. And 2, 2, 2, 1. And 36 is all about the Wounded Warrior yesterday but the the theme was all about self-love and isn't the wound warrior you know needing to learn self-love you know to not sit in their wounds and keep trying to defend the old things they fought for the injustices instead letting them go of the battle just not being in battle ever always staying in the present moment to see the good in the situation now and allow, and trusting in the universe that it naturally energetically takes care of itself to rebalance it has to Okay, so trusting in the universe. It's also about relationship changes and spirituality. And the coding had to do with um, clearing like the nine or the wise one, however you see it, source, okay? Um, it's having the divine feminine clear her world to expose more love for the feminine I was getting at one point like one of the messages was about two sons so it could be someone with two sons but I was literally getting two sons in the sky that love the feminine so I was also getting there may be two masculines coming in for the feminine okay it could be an ex and the divine masculine But just the wisdom of assessing your world, the sun, the lovers, and the moon. Okay, so it's all about love, the world, the sun, and the moon, the nine wise ones. And so ha here we have, you know, the wise men coming up as well. So taking the advice from our elders, our grandparents, okay, who have lived a long life and learned a lot along the way about going out into the world, about the sun and the masculine energy and the moon and the feminine energy and and love and what love is and to love the ex as well it's just about you know being wise and being loved and it's also all about letting go of the wounded warriors lots of them <laughs> times three basically also 108 came up there 108 and six times the moon I was also getting for the masculines basically to align themselves with the divine feminine. So the sun of the masculine lovers aligning themselves with the moon of the feminine, and putting and that the and that the nine or God source universe may have actually put the world between the sun and the moon, the eclipse, the um, the lunar eclipse. 
two for a reason. Two suns to align lovers of the moon. Okay, so there's something about that, about the eclipses coming up, and possibly two, two masculine suitors for the divine feminine. So for the yesterday, it was coming. It was starting with the Virgo or the Hermit or the Wise One, who needs courage for justice to boldly move before roots of suffering grow too deep. And here we go. The root chakra was a main theme in both reads yesterday and today. The Virgo Libra energies blocked by weakness of a possible Cancer energy associated with the military war path. Okay, because the chariot is Cancer, but it's very much of war. It's also ascension, but it depends on the perspective of the person. In the traditional sense, it was about being on the war path, you know, being very bold and running roughshod over people. So when on the war path, the, the one advantage of being on the war path is that it is that the cloudiness clears and what's important becomes known. So when you're in your power without anger, this is ascension, being able to clear the blocks, the shadows, to get clarity without having to go there to that warlike state. This, without, without anger, is ascension. All right, so it's all about the chariot. The chariot was the underlying energy here. So chariot is in here, again, is referencing back to Diana again, too. Cancer, chariot, and war. And our, what is our past is all about wars. So destiny is about to align with innocence, pure love, catching you when you fall, family, cancer, love rain on me came up there. As you offer yourself a new life, releasing feeling overwhelmed or dumped by a twin third party situation or just your overindulgences, which can be um, antisocial behavior as well, but any overindulgences. Choosing the children over the addictions, the purity of love, your children, and number one, your inner child. Be your parent and the family to your children with loving arms offering a new life to release the pain and suffering or spending some money on yourself. And I was getting ready to roll and ready to rumble moving or traveling to romantic feelings or reconciliation, going stage left from away from a military past, which is the right, okay? You've been, you've completed the war wounds and you've completed mourning your soldier's return for the divine feminine, reconciled as a reminder of its cost and walking away from masculines you need to control and dominate, requiring you to sacrifice yourself. Walking away and freeing self from romantic feelings that don't serve you in order to take a new leap of faith. And domestic harmony was coming up as the main underlying energy yesterday is really important. And that was with the change of the North Node into Cancer, which is all about home and family. Laying down swords of war and defensiveness in order to detox from horns or bugles because that might be a trigger for you a horn is going to be referenced to bugle right and uh and uh, you know boot camp and things like that also you're detoxing from superheroes because see superheroes are all about getting the bad guy okay it's about polarity about ties and other BS that keeps you collecting nuts and stacking them in your tree and guarding them from the enemy, defeating the point of the loving family, ending a family cycle, ready for blast off to fly in a new direction. And Spirit's been connecting with me. The war path becomes ascension. Neutralized aggression is true power and strength. It's that inner power, that inner strength. So recently for the Divine Feminine, yesterday, um, justice was up for review as divine timing brings out truth and sudden events. Bombs are dropped, 
not I'm not getting literal bombs, you know, epiphanies, things like that. But it could be like, you know, news, news, you know, big bombs like that are dropped. And epiphanies, love and war, the family, ascending past pain to a new life, dumping out the old emotions about defending things to the death, to ascend into love. The foundation had to do with breaking chains and patterns of conflict and offering energy exchange instead for peace without option. As the Queen of Pentacles purifies her intentions and blocks in order to manifest, you know, for manifestation, and giving more of herself, her loving energy, and allowing herself to receive energy in return, allowing others to express their feelings to you and walking away if you need to clarify your intentions more carefully. And also allowing receipt of monetary exchange as well comes up with this ideology. So the main energy has to do with the Ace of Wands. You know, it's all about passion, but remember I always say the Ace of Wands is inspiration with ego. And there's nothing wrong with passion, but, um, you know, you have to use it in moderation. It's inspiration but you got to watch the ego especially if it's associated with root, root chakra passion okay so with this ace of wands there's angelic type of patience of secrets revealed or not using your intuition when dealing with family money energy and love that's been offered as the knight of cups and it's coming up for me as the Divine Masculine here, exposed love offered, so maybe love offered to him, exposed to family, or him just offering love, he's exposing his love to family, the Divine Feminine confesses and drops burdens, sharing her grief with others in order to help them release their burdens. Okay, So coming together to co-create and integrate passionate new beginnings, and transformation with kids and twins and happy moments and friends from your childhood as the Thanksgiving holidays approach. The Queen of Pentacles is okay with separation from Angel while they both get their lives in order after letting go of fighting for the right, so injustices, and not crying, and instead right living allowing emotions to flow naturally, allowing positive habits that bring joy and connection. Being guarded to the past wounds only perpetuates implementation of falling on your face due to lack of faith. That love is always worth the risk. The challenge for the Divine Feminine was coming up as positive energy, exposure, bright light, holding on loosely to freedom, dreams, and shining your light of joy despite frustrations or lack of inspiration due to not co-creating with the emperor or possibly uninspired or frustrated when you do come together with the emperor as the queen of wands sits beside him looking away at the magician with all the toys but only focused on himself exposure of the emperor holding on to dreams at work but sexually frustrated because the queen of wands is looking at a magician so there's a couple different scenarios here so we see, I was seeing the emperor was sitting next to the queen of wands who was looking over at the magician, okay? So, or the karmic, her father and the divine masculine have a partnership where the father controls her and doesn't like her focusing or doting on him because, because the emperor knows that he's not loving her properly, okay? Um, can also be a couple that the divine masculine partnered with where the wife has her sights on him. So all of these different scenarios between the Emperor and the Queen of Wands, karmic energy, could be a Divine Feminine, but I was getting it mostly as karmic energy. So between the Emperor and the Magician, but she is definitely looking at the Magician. She's not focusing on the Emperor at all, but she's, she's, she's taking the status that she gets from sitting next to the Emperor was what I was getting. So she's soaking that all up allowing the emperor to give and give and give to her, but she's focused on this other magician. He may not be on, totally on the up and up, you know, but he's got all the good toys. So all these different scenarios that may have gone on 
after the Divine Feminine walked away from the Divine Masculine. Her transformation from just working or being alone, focusing on what to do in order to shine her light, no longer focusing on the Divine Masculine who wonders where his flame went, as possible Leo energy continues to tackle him or restrain him. So this Leo keeps coming up over and over again as someone in the Divine Masculine's life who's controlling him. The magician may have pushed the Leo away and she may be trying to come back. So I was getting in one case the myth, as the magician as the Divine Masculine that he may have pushed his, his, part, his, other, his partner away so they may have been separated for a while and she's trying to come back now. Um, but I was getting the magician has awakened as his angel with wings, knowing his trophy is just a candle made of wax that only melts away with the slow burn. So maybe the karmic energy doesn't work that way. So he realizes this isn't going to work, okay? Because for her, it's like running hot and cold as opposed to a slow burn. So soon for the Divine Feminine, the Seven of Swords comes up here. It's the Seven of Orbs in this deck or downloads in this deck are coming in and passing them to release information about the downfall of the Empress or that the worst is over and all the swords are falling out or women dominating men and their own feelings of lack, feeling of loss and regret. So we're, it's, we're, we're seeing that the masculine feminine is coming out of power. Any women who have been dominating men just for the sake of being able to be in power and control them they will fall as well as the men in power because now we have not only Leo falling away from the North Node, but we have Capricorn in the South Node, which is all about traditional institutional control in a masculine sense in the patriarch. So any women who, who were in roles of power identifying with the patriarch or the patriarchy, so they're, going, they're going to fall also. But also, like I said, women dominating men, their own feelings of lack, because you, know, you feel lack, it, that's an insecurity if you need to feel like you, you know, you're dominating over other people. Um, also feeling loss and regret. The Divine Feminine is, show, is seeing herself as three cups. So, And I was getting definitely joy and celebration around this feeling. Uh, messages at work, aligning details of spirituality, and thinking outside the box of establishment in order to recover from injury and those who have held back the truth from her. All right, so she's coming into her power and her confidence. The underlying energies, or actually the cards that came up for the Divine Feminine were give, give your relationship a chance and trust, which is all about having faith and patience, and then very soon, again. So I was seeing the Divine Feminine having fun sharing downloads, and around her, is an emperor released from a warlike mentality after chaos turning his world upside down. So this can be the divine masculine, but it can be a karmic in the divine feminine's life as well. But this emperor is released from a warlike mentality. So whether it's a war ma warlike mentality or literally the military, it's the, anything warlike is coming up here um, yesterday and today. So after chaos turning his world upside down, now he's learning to give it up to source, God, okay, spirit, whatever. So only faith and freedom now yesterday stood between the divine feminine and the divine masculine. Faith and freeing yourself. The divine feminine needed to clear blocks about success, good news, attention, and followers, where these are things she might have pushed away from her life before, now allowing it removing the blocks about that stuff that you had most of your life and detaching from emotions which is just manipulation because you know if you're detached from your emotions you become manipulative because you're not being authentic worrying about rejection you need to release that no invites or opportunities don't worry about that just do what you love and do what what drives you to help others but it's always it has to have that love intention behind it to be successful so, and also let go of being stuck in limbo, always looking for another point of view. Okay, thinking that you're forever going to always, you know, you, you'll never be able to just be at peace. 
let go of these. These are your perceptions, and you, you feed into them when you think these things. Also blocks about how men have kept themselves and their children detached from you in the past, possibly, and worried that your divine masculine might do the same, all right, or might put the kids between you or, or all, all of them stay detached from you in some way, which you don't want because you want intimacy. So this, the, card, the, the cards that came out in the numerology deck were spirituality, relationship change, and self-love, okay? Allow the relationship just even between you and yourself to change. Allow the self-love and the spirituality. Don't be afraid of any rules because that's where adapta adaptation comes in, that things are always changing, <laughs> okay? You're not going to get stuck in anything. That's the whole point that co-creation is constant change. It's allowing the constant change and not being in fear about it. So there's exposure of the sham fam, you know, or the artificial family that looks good on the outside, but it's not at, at all on the inside. And so it's exposure of the sham fam and, um, despair and families or disbanded families and breakups due to self-love and wanting to feel good and be happy with high energy. So these relationships breaking up are now going to be exposed. There is magic to be had with the moon at night with the angels and synchronicities sharing and lighting candles. The Knight of Wands allowing themselves to feel their emotions and magically release them into that good night. The King of Swords and King of Cups reversed get, may get their independence or so they may break up with each other because if the Queen of Cups is reversed, she's not happy. Or the King of Swords sits in his emotions of his three-way situation with the King of Swords, the Queen of Cups reversed and the independent comfortable female. So he's sitting in it instead of running away from his feelings and allowing his feelings feeling into them. Also, some Divine Masculines may have a daughter declaring their independence from their parents, okay? And it doesn't have to be Divine Masculine, it can be the Karmic Masculine as well. So there's a bold move or travel of the Queen of Pentacles to have fun with others and let everything go up to source, you know, which is that surrender. Injustice and new passions are exposed, taking risks for good news on the journey with kids and or your twin, or possibly an old friend at the new moon, building up to the full moon. So now we're waxing, and this is referencing back to the wax statue that just melts and doesn't sustain a slow burn. As the moon waxes, the trophy candle melts away, everyone learning the satisfaction of their own sovereignty. Make sure you know what you want without taking foolish risk. No major decisions until mid-December, and then the eclipses come um, January 5th and January 21st. So then we get in today, and social anxiety was coming up. Um, for all of those who, who don't know Spiritual Acceleration, Bonnie, she's great for, she does uh, group clearings, so if you want to check out her website, she's amazing. And she did, uh, she started her clearings for social anxiety um, yesterday. Okay, so social anxiety is coming up. Um, and before that was um, post-traumatic stress syndrome. There's a lot of different things. She has uh, large free group clearings as well as um, smaller groups that are more discounted and then, of course, one-on-one -on -one healing. So um, she's been doing this for, I don't know, at least 30 years. So check her out. She's, she's great. So for today's read, today is uh, November 8th, 2018. Eight is all about strength and the lion. And... The day adds up to 30 of the Four of Wands. So that's that three. It's that source energy of zero behind the three, which is all about self-expression um, and coming together and being social and just being authentic, authentically who you are in joy. But it's the Four of Wands energy and strength. Today, very much was coming up about the root chakra. And the Four of Wands is all about the root chakra because it's about uh, the number four building, and earthly things and like I've said before four is very much about earthly manifestations the things that you need to survive on this earth okay that's what the four is all about 
It's about stability. How do you live here? Okay. So there's nothing wrong with being selfish because you need to be selfish to survive, right? So those are those, we're talking about root chakra issues and instincts. How do you find the skills to survive on this earth? And this is the uh, energy we're transmuting today because it's all about brute strength and root chakra stability issues, okay? There's nothing wrong with the Four of Wands and the Strength card. It's beautiful strength and union as well. But it's about the four walls of stability and that kind of support, the home, and the strength perceived needed in order to maintain that home and your survival on this earth. So a lot of stuff comes up in this read about the, uh, the root chakra. It's all about the root chakra. There's nothing wrong with the strength, but remember this is Leo, and Leo just fell out of, out of the North Node, so you don't pay attention to Leo anymore. It's not anything negative about Leo, but it's no longer what you're following. It's not the energy you're following anymore. So it's not about who's the strongest, the most powerful. You don't need to prove your strength. It's just about your inner power. And then the Four of Wands, it's just about now the cancer energy, you know, making that comfortable home and family, a loving, a loving, warm place to be. So we start with the Major Arcana of Alchemy, which is the um, Temperance card in the Syrian Starseed deck, the Tower, Higher Self, and the Hermit energies. And the Hermit is reflection in this deck. Okay, so Alchemy, Tower, Higher Self, and Reflection. Uh, there was three swords, two cups, two pentacles, and no wands for the Divine Feminine today. And the only court card that came up was the Queen of Swords. The numbers that came up were uh, four, two fours. Okay, so four is being really emphasized here, okay, that root chakra thing. Four, five, four, um, 13, 10, 10, 322. And 55 was coming up a couple times today as well. Um, and I want to bring up that the King of the Queen of Swords was the only court card in here, but within the foundation of the read, the, court, the Queen of Swords came up three times. So there's going there's also uh, main players from the clarification cards of the Emperor and the King of Cups. So there are two different men in this scenario, and the Queen of Swords could actually be one Queen of Swords or two separate Queen of Swords. There definitely can be the Divine Feminine and a Karmic Swords energy there. And the King of Cups and the Emperor can be different players for different people. So both the Emperor and the King of Cups could be the Divine Masculine or a Karmic energy. So you have to fit it to your situations. I'm letting you know beforehand so you see it that way. Um, the coding had everything to do with using your intuition. And it had to do with crystals, which is all about practicality and living here on this earth. You know, it's rocks, crystals. Okay, it's very root chakra-y. Um, I was also, I was getting that um, to seal your energy right now, like, like save, don't make any quick um, expenditures, but use your intuition if you, if you do spend. But I was getting sit tight, okay? Don't make any quick moves. Unless you're following your direct intuition. Don't feel pushed into anything. I was getting high five as well. And this may be related to DNA. Um, so your lineage. Also getting um, for the Divine Feminine for expansion and possibly a lot of offers to come into her that it was all about the Ace and the Four of Crystal. So it's about saving and and starting your new life, you know. Um, could be an offer that comes to you of finances or just a practical new life offer. But it could also be um, you offering somebody else something, but, but making sure that you're stable on your own to save your, your money, okay? Also, um, I was getting something about four DNA strands having to do with expanding energy, but also purging and crying and stalling, so people might be stalling. Uh, it ha might have something to do with just family lineage, you know, what runs in your family. Um, but again, to hold on to your energy, and by you holding on to your energy here and not um, 
letting it dissipate, you're warming the Divine Masculine's heart. So you're helping his energy at the same time. So the codes, just some quick codes that I had that came up were Rhino High Five, which is Tommy James and the Shondells. And that was from iTunes. And also Ice Age came up. And it was Collision Course. The four times heavy thoughts champion of the world, which I thought was just perfect. Okay, the four times heavy thoughts <laughs> for the Divine Feminine. Champions of the world. And then I was getting a, uh, a llama and an aardvark. So I don't know anything about the movie Ice Age, if this is from that, but it's coming from Ice Age, the, the website. That there was the llama forming into a gong shape and spitting into the bowl that the aardvark holds. That's Shangri Lama and Geotopia Aardvark. Um, so getting into the read. Like I said, this Queen of Swords is the underlying energy here. She can be both the Divine Feminine or a Karmic, or sh both of them can be here, because there's three Queens of Swords, so there can be one that's actually Divine Feminine right next to the Karmic energy, okay? And there's definitely three of Swords energy that was coming up as well. So three Queen of Swords and three Heartbreaks, okay? The Queen of Swords is coming up here as impatient with others, coming, coming at them, so people coming at the Queen of Swords at the new moon. Or impatient for new messages that are not coming at the new moon, waiting to pull the slot machine handle. So she's ready to roll, but there's a little heart behind it right now. Like the inspiration's not there. She's being her truth, but she's not keeping her heart open. Awake to the commitment of what she talks about. And then I was getting gangrene coming up. And you wonder, why is gangrene coming up all of a sudden here? Well, when there is no circulation or energy or flow, there is death. And I was getting specific, so I don't know if someone's having any issues, but I was getting specific an index finger, the tailbone, and the penis. And the tailbone has all, is the root chakra, right? And the index finger, you know, points the blame at others. And well, we know about the penis, right? But these were the three things coming up around this, this idea about gangrene. Then, all dying away and you notice these are all extremities as well when there is no circulation energy flow there is death we can grow new collaterals in our body with our vessels but it takes a long time and patience and movement if you don't get up and move the collaterals won't grow okay you have to get the blood pumping so finger points to the base of the mountain that you have spirits connecting with me, that you have to start somewhere. The seat of the root to find your satisfaction. The spirit's still connecting with me. I can't tell, I express to you how much this read was all about the root and don't avoid dealing with your root chakra, that it was very important. Start again and work your way up to the crown. I was literally getting this in the cards. There's gonna be these constant reminders of the bottom and the top, working your way from the root up to the crown to commit to this practice and clearing your chakras. And I had just done energy work like this the other day that I haven't done before specifically like this. And just specifically, um, I've done a lot of Reiki work on clearing and that kind of thing, but I haven't done a lot of heavy work recently in that respect. And also I was doing more energy medicine related clearing and just holding your hands over your chakras and sitting with it for a few minutes to allow the images to come up. Because if you hold your chakras, they will be able to show you what you need to see. So just sit, but don't expect for the images to come up right away. Give it a few minutes for images to come up. So sit your hands on each chakra and go up. And it might take you an hour to do this, okay? But find information in that way and then clear as needed. And it can just be done with intention, if that's what you want to do, or you can do it with energy work by doing energy circles. Counterclockwise pulls out negative energies and then, count, and then clockwise resets the energies, basically. So you're being called to do this um, chakra work to bring more heart and satisfaction into your work. There's a wake-up call to the Divine Feminine to offer love, but to allow others to offer love to you as well, to help heal your grief, all right? Because the Queen of Swords is all about being in mourning, okay? And the traditional template for 
the Mary wounds is all about men going off to war and losing them to war, okay? So it's all about helping you heal your grief, to let go of grief and your negative self-talk, that you are worthy of love and you are lovable, and this was very important coming up, the negative self-talk saying that, you know, you've experienced this over and over and over again in your life or your lives of the, of the masculine never coming home again. So to let go of that, that way of thinking that you are, know that you're worthy of love of your soldier coming home or not having war at all in the first place. And then lovable came up because um, in my 20s, I, my next door neighbor took me to a meditation group and that day there was a woman who was channeling. She channeled for a good hour and a half, I believe. And um, she channeled one guide and then an angel would come through for only three questions at the end. So only three people would get to ask a question. So the one noteworthy thing about this session was it was only a group of about 15 people, I think, something like that. And the, the woman channeling, her name was Evelyn, and within this small group, there was five Evelyns. I mean, I'm, I probably haven't met five Evelyns in my life besides myself. And I got to be one of the people to ask a question. So I asked to connect. I was like to connect to relatives for a question, that kind of thing. So I connected with my grandmother. And her message to me was that you are lovable. So I'm passing that message on to you now. And I was getting her like with a little hee-hee like that she's getting her message to come through to everyone. So to find happiness alone, the Divine Feminine must allow the mourning, the mourning of her Divine Masculine or of other Masculines to fall away naturally. The Queen of Swords, again, like I said, came up times three. The truth, getting a handle on the truth and getting your message across and allowing the old sad you to fall away. And this applies to the Divine Feminine and the Karmic Feminines, okay? Allow the Knight of Cups to rise to the top, the root to the crown, despair to love. It is a commitment to source, God, universe, divine higher self. This is your commitment. Also, the children comes up as the underlying energy that they're affecting your love life. Find happiness spending time with children, or you may need to break away from your own children to spend time on your inner child. The Divine Masculine energy may be coming up as like a midlife crisis energy. I was specifically getting air sex behind him, freedom above him, passion below him, and happiness in front of him. And here I was getting like the root goes to the crown and despair goes to love, that ego passion becomes enlightened freedom as the Emperor is tired of the same old trophy posing for the spotlight. Okay, so whoever the Divine Masculine has been with, is tired of someone being with them just for the limelight. Okay? So self-discipline was coming up for the Divine Feminine. It's very important to have a spiritual practice every day. Everything is gray around him. So when I say him too, you have to place it where I'm not going to say Divine Masculine because it could be your Divine Masculine or it could be um, a karmic energy but we're talking about the emperor right now so everything's gray around him even the feather in his cap there's no pillars of light only vague soft lights of pinks and oranges and purples that he senses but he can't quite put his finger on it also white lights like lasers coming through to him as his partner bathes in the glory of it okay his mind is somewhere else some may be seeing their divine feminines as the unattainable bride in the spotlight who probably has offers coming in from all directions of space, time, matter, and realities. And then I was getting Jack in the Box for the Emperor, trying to find his way out of the dark. Now this is somebody else. The King of Cups is out smirking in his own head proud of himself for getting over sadness, loss, and regret by holding back his passions, and instead of accepting what he's been offered, 
He's dumping everything and starting from scratch, wiping the slate clean. Instead of waiting for the big love, he's going after it. He's being Mohammed. And I actually wrote this before I wrote down the, the sand art messages. So instead of Mohammed waiting for the mountain to come to him, Mohammed's going after it, okay? So add, as his holy grail pours onto the crown of the queen of swords, so this, like I said, could be the divine feminine or the karmic, as she focuses in a different direction, because she's actually focused toward the emperor, and the king of cups is pouring his love down on her. So the root chakra, grief, satisfaction in comfort and food and drink, because all root chakra stuff, survival stuff, children and lusty passion. All of these issues are coming up here for the divine feminine to see that these are root chakra issues, that they are root chakra based. And that's not where you are right now. You're not finding, you're not finding um, your home as your safety net. You know, you're finding that your heart is your safety net. Recently, for the Divine Feminine, a family may have put out some money to travel to a wet bar or pools with bars in them, you know, like going to Mexico or something, but also is getting Hershey PA and Hershey's Kisses coming up or a candy factory or moving due to a flood and or traveling while home gets repairs done. So this is not just for the Divine Feminine. This is a family. So it could be on the masculine side, the feminine side, on the karmic side, okay? But this family is maybe traveling while the home gets repairs done or fixing up the home to move. Patching and repairing, covering things up with a little spending to appease people. I'm getting Cancer and Scorpio energies here attached to the King of Cups and also Aries and Taurus energies attached to the Emperor. There's a Cancer pretending not to see the truth of feelings expressed in news or messages that were of truth. Mind-blowing or crown-blowing truth of this journey that the Divine Feminine has been on. The King of Cups is acting like everything is fine, that things can be fixed and patched while the Queen of Swords is cold and ready to pull the switch. The foundation, after no message or even the smallest conversation, the, it's the Divine Feminine energy I was getting here is moving forward in a practical way, laying down all swords of battle, the Ten of Swords, the Five of Swords, the Page of Swords, Letting go of all that, all the swords, the warlike energies and defensiveness in order to end pain for good. The central energy is alchemy. No more small talk. Manifest or get off the pot or sword. Ending pain, right? That's pretty painful sitting on a sword. Ending pain by using tools of alchemy, the alchemical process, psychic abilities, patience, and moderation allowing the pain to just fall away standing up for yourself when you're in the spotlight with inspiration without worry and stress that a man might touch you or the masculine worrying about what might happen if he tries to touch her or him worrying about other men touching her these are all things that need to fall away the traditional template of the man and the woman okay so, and I'm and talking about touching, it doesn't have to be physical touching. It's metaphoric for the feminine learning how not to be afraid to allow people into your energy, not to feel intimidated by masculine thinking they want something from you. To just allow the love. And if someone does cross the line, then you walk away from the situation. Don't be afraid of it ahead of time. That's the point. Because you don't need that fear, worry, or anxiety. You need to let that go. Same for the masculine. Stop worrying that you know, you don't want to try something because someone's going to, you know, be offended by it and then you'll get in trouble for it. Trust. Use your intuition. Your intuition knows whether somebody wants something from you or not or wants to be touched by you. So the challenge for the Divine Feminine has to do with offering a new life, possibly with children that are not hers, or giving love to someone who may be imprisoned in their own mind who won't accept your love that they may be feeling like they're above you in status or vice versa and notoriety. The, cha the Divine Femme is challenged by the wheel slowing during the retrogrades in order for us to awaken more fully to any masculine anger blocking self-love and dumping love that isn't serving your opportunities. Partners all about business and work and money and opportunity but no love there at all. 
loveless partners are exposed to bleeding out. Okay, so now in the head and heart of the Divine Feminine is the tower. Sudden inspections and infections are coming up, as well as longing for another. Or the Queen of Wands suddenly expresses her feelings and passionately, looking back to move forward in a practical way, recovering finances and a place to stay, and depressed about starting over in love. This is this Queen of Wands energy. Also, epiphanies in meditation, rest, and in staying quiet, overworking or unable to focus on work, receiving messages of truth and talking about the past. Also, there's a possible knight in shining armor from the past may interrupt the Divine Feminine's work or meditation to express some harsh truth, offering the Queen of Wands an opportunity to now express her feelings as well. All right, so, so uh, there may be the Knight of Swords may come in to say something, but the Knight of Swords could also be coming in with the Queen of Wands to say something. And she's not planning on saying something, but something is said that allows her to now express her feelings as well. So Virgo sadness or Aquarius third party attention or Scorpio burdened and or confession in trying to wake someone up and expose a dead relationship. Soon, for the Divine Feminine today, is gaining clarity on what makes you happy, letting go of anxiety issues without options because possible health, and this doesn't have to just be with the Divine Feminine, it could be the masculine as well. They're being called to let go of anxiety issues without options of po because of possible health issues, back pain, stomach ulcers, bleeding, or right kidney, liver, and right intestinal issues, as well as uh, GERD and heart issues. Due to saving money, and it all being all about the money, or waiting too long and not acting on a health issue, now convalescing, resting, or just quieting your heart, and taking better care of your health. Especially the King of Cups, and or Sagittarius, Leo, or Libra energy is coming up around that information the divine feminine is seeing herself in her higher self working on co-creating opportunities while out of control masculines and masculine feminines must let go of ego to take control back and hermit wise one sheds light on the king of cups his emotional detachment as the divine feminine is called to make an effort to take back control of her life and release her ex or at least clear any lingering energies of exes okay especially about related children who have been put between you. Around the Divine Feminine is an injured masculine left behind, gaining back the energy of his inner child, exposing himself, hopefully not streaking anywhere, <laughs> releasing stress and anxiety issues, and feeling unstable out in the world. Uh, also maybe moving as well in order to let go of sadness and loss wherever he is at the moment. Okay, so it's it's the, a divine masculine who's freeing himself, you know, exposing himself where he normally would never have done that before. Um, only root chakra passion stands between the divine feminine and divine masculine today. Clear blocks of solitude, feeling like you have to let go of all that you hold dear and constantly be on the move or be strong all the time and to always be the one providing the light. It's just not true. So let go of all of these absolutes of perfection. Um, intuition, like I said, and spiritual partnership are coming up as the main guidance for the Divine Feminine. Focus on your intuition and your spiritual partnership. That there's energy of missing or longing for someone of the past, giving it all up to source, the chasing, the silencing, the control, the family and the masculine rejection, the olive branch and the romance. Justice comes to those who wait or are patient. The Queen of Pentacles reversed may get justice and romance, but she, she may need to put out some money for the King of Pentacles, who may have been kicked out of the house for keeping quiet about flirting at work or playing Superman to get attention. Suddenly silent and giving it all up to God, source, universe, suddenly ascending, moving or traveling with a partner or soulmate. Just a little more hard work towards victory in this journey, detoxing a split from a marriage and or detoxing getting clear on your commitment to yourself or to your par or to a new partner the queen of swords ends pain connecting with her higher self releasing family loss and or regrets 
with patience and moderation, offering a new life of peace and quiet, holding light and sudden epiphanies, surrendering and ascension. And there's a sudden shift here. The Queen of Swords mourns family death or just a love loss and sudden, suddenly alchemizing pain and a new life, meditating and letting go of sadness through wisdom and surrender. Okay, so very powerful messages for the Divine Feminine today. And I'm going to pull some um, oracle cards for you as well. And let me show you the, the reads before I forget. So this is yesterday's read. Today's read for the Divine Feminine. Okay. Alright, so for the Oracle cards, the Ascension deck. Oh, it was 10101. 10101. Everyone take a deep breath, clear and align. Clear and align. Clear and align. Okay, so what is the advice for everyone watching today? This November 8th, 2018, what is the advice? Alright, we have the moon and Lord Kamikas at the bottom, number 42. Okay, the affirmation for Lord Kamika is I call on Lord Kumika to enlighten and support me. Okay, so remember it's going from root to enlightenment, to freedom. And that's blue topaz for Kumika. Okay, the, the card that came out is the moon, right at the new moon energy. Okay, it's number 11 of justice, so that was all about justice yesterday and today as well. The moon is the causal chakra of the universe and radiates divine feminine energies. Call on it to cleanse your aura and energize you. Remember the influence of this celestial body is always there whether you can see it or not. When you're offered this card, you're called on to practice your feminine qualities of love, wisdom, compassion, intuition, inclusiveness, discernment, and oneness. Your guidance is to go within and seek answers from your huge font of wisdom. The moon will bring you clarity so that you can flow with the current of ascension. Okay, and it was very much about that. Okay, so remember sometimes, like I said, the deep emotions bring coming to the forefront that could make you angry also bring clarity to your mind. So you learn to contain that and bring that clarity without showing anger or feeling anger by channeling it. Okay, and there's so many connections here from the reads, okay? Talking about You know, wisdom, intuition was one of the cards today, and just coming into oneness and, you know, offering and receiving love from everyone. And not being afraid to allow people into your energy. Okay? Alright, so from the past life deck. Take another deep breath. Bear in a line. Clear line. Clear line. Okay. All right. What is the advice? This November eighth, two thousand eighteen. For everyone watching. Okay. We have karmic relationship and Greco-Roman. The high priest or priestess is at the bottom. And nuns came up in the read as well today. And the sandbar. Okay. So. Um, be the high priest or priestess that you are, but not the old template, right, of the nun or the one who has to sacrifice. We need to break those cords and vows and everything that has to do with the old. But it is about surrender and surrendering to the universe. And the cards that came out were Greco-Roman and karmic relationship.
Okay, so again, it's about military and leaving the masculine, leaving it behind, and and you know the old ways of. of the um, the Colosseum as well, you know. The masculines have to come out and fight the lions. So it's the same as war, you know, going out to get killed. We need to break all of our connections, cords, vows, with all of these things, promises to, to sacrifice. And let go of the expectation, okay, of waiting for someone to return or or feeling like you're going to be heartbroken that will never happen, just because that's what's happened in the past, that they'll never return. Okay? <laughs> and then, Journey of Love. Take another deep breath. Clear and align. Clear and align. Okay. What is the advice? This November 8, 2018, for everyone watching, what is the advice today? For everyone watching. Okay. The bottom of the deck is 48, Man of the Earth, Woman of the Sky, which was just pulled the last time, I think. Okay, Man of the Earth, Woman of the Sky. Number 48 is that Eight of Cups energy of going within or walking away to work on yourself. It's very gold in the center, vortex, you know, the Christ light. And then the card that came out is Gifts Received, which is number 13, which, we, which came up today. It's about death, transition, transformation. But here it's very golden green, so it's a very heart chakra and solar plexus chakra. So that's basically your power center. Okay. And also it's very much about nature in this card, which does, isn't, doesn't come up much in these cards at all. It's just natural grass and stuff like that. So... It's very important about the earth and the root chakra and living here on earth and the gifts we've been given here to help us survive. Okay, but just it's about 13, about rebirth, death and transformation. And just allowing the nature of it. It's just nature's way. And here the caterpillar and the into the butterfly comes up too. I don't know if it's supposed to be a caterpillar, but it looks like it. <laughs> And shining this in this card too, they're showing shining the light from the heart center in the solar plexus. Okay, so shining your Christ light. Okay, it's very much green. So we're going to read that one. Number thirteen. Allow the falling away and see the beauty in the dead leaves. Okay, the dying leaves. Gifts received. Relax. It's okay to accept what's coming your way now. Gentle your soul. Steady your heart. Even the most precious treasure can be received by you. And why not? Are you not built of the same stuff as the treasure, beloved? It's all love after all. That is all that there is. Enjoy. Accept. Rest in the knowledge that you are being invited into a sanctuary of abundance. Peaceful rest and replenishment now. It's just time. This oracle holds a message for you. The universe is trying to get something to you. More abundance, more love, an answer to a prayer. Sometimes the healing comes in unexpected packages. Sometimes we try so hard to find the answer, exerting so much effort to receive, that we make things harder for ourselves than they need to be. So relax, have some fun, be at peace. Everything is working out just fine, and there's a nice surprise coming your way. And the poem simply says, The wind blows softly through grass and my open heart. Love unexpected. Okay. Drink your water. Rise and be loved. Have an amazing day, guys. Bye.